In this video, I'm going to talk about what I found in my oil at about 8,600 miles. I've been doing testing with Blackstone Labs and very recently started doing testing with Speed Diagnostics. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking through the three tests that I've done with Blackstone Laboratories. And then in a future video, I'll be going over the tests that I did with Speed Diagnostics. Despite all the predictions I got about my motor exploding or seizing or stopping working because I wasn't doing 3,000 mile oil change intervals. Nothing bad has happened. Engine is fine. Wear indicators are fine. I've been running my AMSOIL Synthetic 5W40 up to 8,600 miles. And at the time of this video, I've actually run it to over 10,000 miles, like 10,400 things totally fine. So I am doing oil testing about once a month and the results that we're going to go through, I'll put them up on the screen here, are from Blackstone Laboratories. So I actually did three testing rounds with Blackstone Laboratories and in my next video I do on this oil testing series, I'm actually going to be reviewing results from Speed Diagnostics. Very important disclaimer here. I want to be clear, I am not saying that you should now do 10,000 mile oil change intervals. That is what works for me based on the oil analysis that I've done. And I've noticed when the motor oil geek, Lake Speed, talks about doing oil testing and you know the importance of changing your oil, people come out of the woodwork and think he's saying, oh, you should be changing your oil every 3,000 miles. And that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is you should be testing your oil to find out what intervals you should be doing and then base your maintenance off of that. Base it off of science, not off of stipulations. So until you do oil analysis, my recommendation is change your oil every 5,000 miles until you're doing oil analysis. I'm like kicking myself that I didn't do this when I first got my truck. You should be testing your oil, and I can't stress this enough if you're actually working your truck. I know there's a large portion of you out there that have these, and you don't drive more than 10 to 20,000 miles a year. You know, you're probably fine doing 5,000 mile intervals because your oil probably needs changed every six months as it is. But if you're like me and you're driving seven to 10,000 miles per month, the cost of doing oil changes at 3,000 mile intervals, as some suggest, is just ludicrous at that point. You know, you're gonna be doing an oil change every week. Like last week, I drove like 4,000 miles. I'm not gonna change my oil once a week. Like, that's just a ridiculous amount of money. I will put these res results up on the screen, but we're gonna walk through this. So what you're seeing is I did an oil change at around 6,000 miles. So that's in the far right column. That was actually the first test I walked through in another video on this channel. So that was kind of my first video in a series I'm doing on oil analysis. Uh, the second test I did was at 7,918 miles, and the third test was at 8,673 miles. Now, since then, I have done more testing on oil that was driven 9,150 miles. All the info and indicators is coming back good. Now, as you can see, Blackstone Labs, you know, this report has a lot less you'll see in the 8673, there's a lot less potassium and bore on there because I wasn't running the Archoil AR9100. Now, I've been experimenting with that, especially with the video the Motor Oil Geek posted, basically talking about how engine oil additives are not good. Now, he didn't test Archoil, and from what I've seen in my analysis, Archoil didn't do anything to hurt the oil life or the viscosity necessarily. You know, I'm still kind of where the viscosity should be. The arch oil brought it down to closer to 65, um, whereas without the arch oil, it's closer to 68.4, uh, which you'll see all the way over the left side of the bottom column there. It really didn't impact my wear at all either. The biggest thing from this report, and you can see like my wear metals are pretty stable. I have, you know, aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin levels are all 
staying pretty close together. I don't really have any sort of increases. Really, the only thing that dropped was the potassium and boron, which decreased because I wasn't using the AR91 in that last test, which is the one all the way to the left that was 8,673 miles. Blackstone Labs recommended in this report 10,000 mile oil changes. I have been doing that now. Occasionally, I'll go sooner. So, you know, if it's convenient for me, if I'm home, if I have oil on hand, you know, sometimes I'll change it at 8,000 or at 9,000 because the trips that I'm doing now are, you know, usually I'll be cranking like 4,000 miles in a week. And so I don't really want to go over 10,000. Uh, my wear indicators have been incredible. I don't really see any reason to deviate from this. I think just running good oil really does, it, it works wonders for your car and for your truck and for whatever vehicle it is, you know? I think the biggest thing that I found with running high mileage oil, so the biggest thing I found with running 8,000 mile oil is that expensive oil and just quality oil in general, it matters, it does. And, you know, there's people saying, all right, yeah, you could probably just do, you know, conventional or like a cheap base oil and just change it more often. And sure, that's fine, but you you have to do it more often. And for someone like me who's driving so much, I'm not, I don't wanna change my oil every single week. It's bad enough having to do it once a month. I don't wanna do oil changes every week or every five days. And oil like Amsoil allows you to run it to 10, 15,000 miles and not have to change it. And so I think the biggest finding with this is, all right, obviously number one, you should be doing oil analysis because the science points to oils having evolved and being able to take longer drain intervals. Uh, and you know, number two, the old adage of like, you should be changing your oil at 3000 miles is kind of stupid. I mean, it makes sense, right? Like manufacturers like Ford are saying, if you're in the severe duty group, you should be changing it every 3,500 or whatever it is, right? And like that to me, you know, makes sense if you're not doing the analysis and if you're running like a standard conventional oil, but if you're doing oil analysis and the analysis is showing you the inside of your motor and all the wear metals and it's saying, hey, you should go longer, right? Like, I don't know. To me, like there's no possible way the oil testing companies are colluding with the automotive manufacturers and that they're going to try to convince you to go longer so your engine fails sooner like that's stupid and i've used now two separate testing companies for oil analysis both blackstone labs and speed diagnostics and all the wear indicators from both of the tests show 10,000 mile oil change intervals for my truck is totally fine if anything it's probably on the low side i could probably run up to 15,000 miles on the same oil and I intend to keep extending my intervals until that happens. And I've been doing this for 40,000 miles, you know, just slowly extending my drain intervals. So, I mean, I don't know, the truck's probably gonna hit 200K this year. So if anyone really thinks 3,000 miles are it and they think my motor's gonna fail, leave a comment below, I'll pin it, and I'll come back to you when this truck has 300,000 miles on it. And I don't know, you can buy me dinner or something like that if you're so sure that 3,000 miles are it because it's not, changing your oil more often. It's changing your oil based on your specific individual use case. You know, how are you running the truck? You know, what are your driving habits? Are you operating it in dusty conditions? Are you working the truck hard? You know, what are you doing like with the vehicle, right? And, and that is completely different. I can't prescribe 10,000 mile oil change intervals to you because you're different than me. All I'm saying and all that the, the, the lubrication specialists out there like Lake Speed Jr. are saying is you should get your oil tested. That's what they're saying. The other thing that I found in this oil though is on the second test, so like this, what you're seeing here is kind of their Blackstone Laboratories comments on my third test I did with them. On the second test, they did detect some fuel dilution. Now that can be caused by the emission system in these newer trucks. So, you know, if you don't have a truck that has an emission system on it, you probably won't have issues with fuel dilution. 
I actually recently got a engine code. It was a P2459, which basically is a regen frequency code. It's telling you the truck is regening too often, and that can be caused by sensor failure, DPF failure, or a PCM issue, right? And so my truck's PCM was up to date, and uh, I don't really have any issues with like hazing or the truck running improperly. And so what I've kind of come to is I need to replace a pressure sensor in the DPF. It's like a $150 part. Probably gonna go see PTT and have that done in a little bit of time here. But I knew there were excessive regions happening because of oil analysis, because I saw, hey, you know, trucks, like not just because I saw from having the OCR turned on that the truck was completing regen cycles like every 150 to 200 miles, but also because in the oil analysis, it showed fuel dilution, a higher you know percentage of fuel dilution. And that was kind of what keyed me into, okay, these regen frequencies aren't normal. Something's up. I need to look into that. And that I got from oil analysis. And that has nothing to do with anything in regards to oil change frequency, that's just from having OCR turned on. Now you can look into and like pause the screen and, and read more into my report. I think the biggest thing that I look for, you know, is, is there water contamination, fuel contamination, coolant? Those three are what I'm looking for. And then outside of that, I really don't care. I mean, obviously I want like metals to be low. That's what you want. And then on top of that, I want to see that my oil change intervals are working. And so that's what I look at. And I'm kind of, I don't know how you can not want to do it because it's $35. And if you own a power stroke, I'm sure you have enough money to spend $35 on an oil test. Like you can't own one of these trucks and not have spare a spare $35 kicking around. They're expensive enough just to keep them running. Good grief. Do an oil test. Just do it. Do it for you. Figure out what's happening inside your engine. It will just give you peace of mind. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you are not subscribed, be sure you do and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to continue this series on the oil analysis that I do. I am an RV transporter. I transport RVs all over the country. I drive my truck really far. I'm going to all kinds of places. I camp out in the bed of my truck and I do some videos on camping stuff too. So if you're interested in power strokes, in Fords, in camping, in RV transport, subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on Power Stroke Maintenance. Cheers.